Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Tracker, a coin sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com slash AAA to save 20% off your order. And by LegalZoom. Get your dream business up and running or take control of your family's future with LegalZoom. For special savings, visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout. Welcome to All About Android, episode 354, recorded on Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I am Ron Richards, and this week I am your sole host of All About Android. But luckily, I am not alone. Mr. Aaron Newcomb, friend of the show, is back. Thank you, Aaron, for joining us. Yeah, you bet. It's nice to be back. It's been quite a while. I don't even know when my last appearance was. I think it was over a year ago. So I could actually tell you, we do keep track, so I could tell you when the last time you were on <laughs> right now. Uh, you were last on... November 29th, 2016. Yeah. So it, yeah. it has been a, it, it has been an age since you've been. It was good to have you back. Um, Crazy. Yeah. So Jason, uh, those of you who follow along on social media on Twitter, Jason is down with the flu. We wish him well. We hope he feels better soon. Uh, Flo is out. Uh, she had already uh, called out for this episode. Uh, so it, it was myself. And I was said, hey, as long as Aaron joins me, we'll get Ron and a Ron. We'll be in good shape. Right. Uh, so Ron there we are. and We're double good. a Ron. Exactly. So what could go wrong, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. By so, the way, my uh, my uh, my boss has picked up on that. He's like a little late to the game on some of these things. So yeah. he finally like watched that Key and Peele episode. And so now like, I don't know how many years, how many years has it been since that episode came out? All That's of a sudden like a around the office. Five, at least five years. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right, right. So all of a sudden around the office, I'm double A or AA Ron. He keeps calling me AA Ron. I'm like, dude, come on. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. You got you got to laugh at the boss's jokes. That's the problem. Yeah, that's so, right. Um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. And for those of you who uh, stay till the end of the show and you can see my solo remote via Skype Oreo tasting uh, where I subjected Aaron to watch me eat mint Oreos. Uh, you can see that at the end of the show during the credits, after the credits. Uh, so for the, you Oreo enthusiasts out there. Uh, but we're here because we're Android enthusiasts. So this week we're going to be talking about Google I.O., Google and HTC, Google Clips. There's just so much Google to talk about. But don't worry. We've also got some Samsung, some Alcatel, and Nintendo. So that said, Victor, why don't you take us into the news? One thing that doesn't call in sick is Android news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason deserves a little compassion. <laughs> but that was a good I didn't one. say I Jason. I was good. Sure, just, yeah, just general, <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. I said Android so, News doesn't call in sick. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some news about uh, Google also doesn't call in sick. And we got some news about Google I.O. Uh, that uh, we got the dates uh, and the location. Google I.O. will take place on May 8th to May 10th at the Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View, California. Uh, fun fact, uh, that is during uh, Google I.O. is taking place during mine and, Flo and Flo's birthdays, respectively. We are May birthdays. Uh, so unknown if I will be attending to celebrate my birthday at Google I.O., but I'm sure Flo will be there. Um, Aaron, uh, do you have any interest in going to Google I.O.? Or? Nah, I just watch these things on uh, the stream now. It's like, yeah. I don't want to go down there. I don't want to fight traffic. Are you kidding me? Well, yeah, I don't blame you for that. That Mountain View traffic <laughs> is bad. But it's also, <laughs> it's they've little... continued, you know, we as we've seen Google I.O. develop over the years, it's continued to become way, you know, like, yes, there are the announcements in the keynote, which does get streamed, but the the tracks themselves are way more developer focused and it becomes, you know, kind of less of a media event and more of a true developer conference. Right, which is good. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was supposed to be, right, in the beginning. Yeah. Yep. Um, and now they, you know, they do the Google I.O. thing in the spring and then they do like they usually announce some phone in September in the fall or yep. or not even phone anymore. Right. It's phone. It's tablet. It's uh, entertainment, Chromecast, devices. It's entertainment devices, everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, personal yeah. assistance. So, um, yeah, I think it's good. Right. Uh, uh, you know, a little sneak peek about what's going on. 
I always enjoy watching the trends about, you know, what they're doing with the latest uh, machine learning stuff. And that was the big thing that, that I still remember from last year's event is the, you know, the kid who developed the uh, machine learning thing to, uh, it was like a cancer tracking thing or something. I mean, it was just oh, like, right. yeah, I remember that it blows your mind, right? Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so well, yeah, for, I think me, it's good that they're keeping it developer focused actually. Yeah. And for me, I think it's, I think Google IO is always good because it sets the agenda for what to expect over the next year. Like, you know, we saw Google IO talk about the importance of Google assistance and building that AI. And now we're seeing it come to fruition with Google home, with the big speaker, with the you know integrations into these screen devices we saw at CES. And so like, I feel like Google IO is kind of like the, the sneak peek into the concepts of what we're going to see. And then later this year, we see them in actual products, which is always right. fun. So, exactly. Um, yep. But sp speaking of fun, Google did not make it easy to find out when Google I.O. would be. Uh, they revealed the dates through an, uh, an online puzzle uh, that lots of lots of people scrambled to play, a very re Ready Player One-esque type thing. Uh, to solve the puzzle, you had to work through rooms in Google Maps to discover clues and reveal the date and the location of Google I.O. 2018. And uh, lots of people did it, they, and they deciphered the fact that it would be May 8th in Mountain View. Um, so I don't remember if I made a prediction whether they were going to move back to San Francisco or not this year. I probably said they would have. And if I did, I was wrong. So made a couple there. Uh, but yeah, so start the clock, the countdown clock to Google IO. We'll start our predictions, uh, in the next few weeks of what to, what to see. I'm sure it's gonna get more exciting as we get there. Um, but some more interesting Google news, uh, coming out of Google's hardware division, uh, a blog went up on, uh, the Google, uh, Google's blog, uh, from Rick Osterloh. Uh, Flo's a big fan of Rick, the head of Google's hardware decision, and basically announcing that they officially closed the deal with HTC. And uh, they're now welcoming uh, all their new teammates from HTC, which features a lot of uh, designers uh, and product designers uh, coming from the HTC side as well as engineers. And uh, the, the blog post goes on to kind of highlight some of the great things that HTC and Google have done so far together, um, working very closely since, you know, since the first 3G smartphone in 2005. And then, uh, you know, of course, more recently working together on the Pixel and the Pixel 2. Um, so this is, you know, this is that big move that Google made uh, last fall in, you know, not quite acquiring HTC. Uh, but now the deal has closed and they're and they're ready to beef up their hardware organization. Uh, Aaron, what 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 are you what are your thoughts around HTC and Google kind of getting in bed together like this? Well, my only concern with this is what does it mean for the other partners, right? I guess they feel comfortable, and we I, I, I'm sure you guys talked about this when this was announced, or you yeah. know, but uh, you know, what what does it mean for um, Samsung? What does it mean for Motorola? What does it mean for other right. uh, vendors in this space? Does it what kind of message does it send? But I think it's a it's a move that's inevitable. It's something they had to do. You, if you want to complete compete with Apple, who makes their own stuff. You got to make your own stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And HTC is a perfect fit. You know, they're not they're not Samsung, so they're easily acquirable. Um, and I really like the HTC stuff that's come out uh, over the year. So I think that I'm trying to remember. I think my first HTC phone was maybe the uh, what was it the the one uh, the one that had the trackball. You remember oh, that I love that the ne the Nexus One. The Nexus that One. Was the, the Nexus One. I love that one with the trackball. That was one of my favorite I'm, phones ever. I, me too. I, I believe that was HTC, and that was a that was such a great phone. I, I hated yeah. to give it up. Um, so yeah, they make good stuff. So it, it's this is this is going to be exciting. So again, this leads into okay, now what are they going to announce in September, right? Uh, right. And, and does this play into what they're going to talk about at I/O as well? Right. Well, what, what's interesting, and I feel like what kind of planted a little seed as to what we can expect from Google uh, through the next year, is that the, the the last paragraph of the blog post says, uh, finally, with the official close of the deal, we're expanding our footprint in the Asia-Pacific region. Taiwan is a key innovation and engineering hub for Google, and Taipei will now become the largest Google engineering site in APAC. So you're seeing them beef up their actual you know engineering presence in the asia marketplace does that mean more aggressive marketing to asian customers you know making a run at samsung and they're they're the, you know kind of the stranglehold they have on korea and as and then you look into what's going on in china with huawei and, and xiaomi uh do you see google getting more involved in those regions by having a a, a strong engineering presence there yeah i'm not sure that translates though just because you have a strong engineering presence there i don't know if that translates to sales and marketing True. for that particular area of the world, right? That particular region. Yeah. So I don't know. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll have to see. Maybe, maybe just being closer in proximity leads to that. But I, I don't know. My experience says it doesn't. You're going to need some, some expertise yeah. uh, to to bring in to make that actually happen. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, no matter what, I think it's going to be very curious to see what that what comes of the whole HCC thing. I think, I think they're a good. They were, like you said, they they were the right fit. Um, for Google, the 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 deal itself was odd and that it wasn't quite the it wasn't a full acquisition. It was like this major investment and the trading of resources and things like that. But um, you know, I've been I've been using a Pixel as my daily driver uh, for a few months now, and I love it so much so that like I have my I see my coworkers with the with the Pixel two, and I've got my eye on it. Um, yeah. They make good phones, so I'm curious to see what they'll do. Uh, speaking of daily drivers, Aaron, since it's been so long since you've been on the show, what phone are you using as your daily? Yeah, it's a Pixel. Uh, Pixel is. XL. Um, I don't actually. I don't quite. There's a few things I miss about it, but I think the and and I haven't gone the Pixel two route yet, just because of the headphone issue. Um, right. I don't know. I'm just a, a little bit of little bit of uh, a single person boycott there. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to jump on that. Like, I'm not going to reward them for for making a bad decision. Um, but well, well, hold, anyway, hold that the, thought the, because la- hold that thought because later in the show, I I promised a Google uh, Pixel Buds review, and uh, we'll be talking more about life without uh, headphone jack. Oh, so. there you go. So you, you, you <laughs> may change my mind. We'll see. Maybe we'll see. So yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we got an email. Let's check in with Adam, who writes in. And says, I saw the disaster with the crushed Oreos last week and wanted to let you know that if it happens again, all is not lost. Just make my sister-in-law's recipe for Oreo balls. I'm going to let that one sit there. Uh, (laughs) This easy recipe is so good that my nephew doesn't ask for a birthday cake anymore. He asks for birthday cake Oreo balls. While classic (laughs) is tasty, my favorite flavors are mint. Like we saw, uh, if you stay tuned to the end of the show, you can see me eat a mint Oreo. Uh, Birthday cake and red velvet. And Adam goes on to explain that the ingredients are, as you would imagine, Oreos, uh, one block of cream cheese, and baker's chocolate slash candy coating, which you can find in the baker's aisle. And he says directions are crush Oreos, mix in cream cheese with Oreos, make into balls about three quarters of an inch in diameter, place on baking sheet, chill, melt the baker's chocolate, spoon chocolate over the balls, and eat. So uh, there you go. If you watched last week's episode, you saw the disaster with the crushed Oreos, uh, and this would be a very good solution for that. I, I might consider a different name for this dish instead of Oreo balls, but uh, that's just me. That's the, I'm a marketing guy. I don't know what I, what I don't know. You know, like just <laughs> so so just uh, just just for my um, edification, the uh, the incident last did did you open the Oreo package and it was all crushed because of shipping or something? So what's funny is I was afraid you'd ask that. I was not on last week's episode, and I did not watch. So I'm assuming something <laughs> like that happened. Maybe those watching the show right now can tell us in the chat room. But uh, my guess is either that they were all crushed or uh, they were crushed in the tasting. I don't know. I was on vacation. So, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to call you out on that. Uh, no, sorry. Victor, you were, Victor, you were here. Can you yeah, tell us what happened? I, I, have a, I have a shot of the the thumbnail up on the screen now basically jason opened up the package and they were like that already they were doa (laughs) they were doa wow okay so (laughs) well now now in that scenario uh we could make oreo balls um which is good to know thank you adam for that recipe if you have other great recipes that involve oreos please email them into us you can email us at aa at twit.tv we can make an entire segment of oreo based recipes and i really (laughs) hope google's enjoying the free advertising for their operating system that we provide (laughs) (laughs) oh oreo um they did talk about last week i saw that they revealed that the next version uh they've been referring to android 9.0 as pi pi uh, which I can't say I was surprised by. No, uh, that's with, not with P surprising. on the horizon, right? Yeah, nerds. But yeah, so we'll see. All right, uh, all right. Well, before we get to hardware, we're going to stop and thank our first sponsor. As this episode of All About Android is brought to you by Tracker. Uh, we're all looking for something, love, a purpose, unforgettable experiences. But for most of us, it's usually your keys. <laughs> and eight years ago, Tracker changed everything when they released their first tracking device, and now they've done it again with the all-new Tracker Pixel. With Tracker Pixel, you'll never worry about losing your things again. Tracker Pixel is the lightest Bluetooth tracking device on the market. Place a Tracker Pixel on whatever you tend to lose, your keys, your wallets, your remote. It's small enough to fit on your smallest items. And let me tell you, I got a Tracker Pixel on my keys because I don't want to lose my keys because I want to go home, and uh, I don't want. And my keys let me do that. So Tracker helps me keep track of my keys. 
Uh, because when you misplace an item that has a tracker pixel attached, you go on the tracker app on your smartphone, press a button, and a 90 decibel alert will help you find it in seconds. It's amazing. Uh, it, it even has a it even has powerful LED lights so you can find your items in the dark. If you lose your phone, just press the button on your tracker pixel and your phone rings even if it's on silent, which is amazing. You can even locate your item if it's miles away, and this is this is the coolest part of Tracker because every Tracker user is part of the largest crowd locate network in the world. And Tracker's 30-day money back guarantee means you truly have nothing to lose. So if you if you want to check out Tracker, if you want to stop losing things, go to thetracker.com/aa that's T H E T R A C K R dot com slash A A, and you can save 20% off your order. That's the tracker.com slash A A for 20% off. The tracker.com slash A A. And we thank Tracker for their support and for helping me not lose my keys and to come home at night uh, because that makes my wife happy. So there we go. Thank you, Tracker. So, <laughs> uh, that said, on to the hardware. So, Aaron, we were talking about the different kind of devices we get from Google, and and uh, last fall they they uh, announced a device that utilized a lot of the AI and machine learning stuff that that we've seen them develop, uh, and now it is finally available. Google Clips is now available on the Google Store, uh, and if you order it, you can get it delivered in March. And this is their wireless smart camera that uh, is designed to capture the big and little moments in your life. And the idea being is that you just leave clips on the table and it always is recording and will capture motion photos that last several seconds uh, without audio. And then you can go back and look at all the clips that it captures and choose the ones you want to save and get rid of the other ones uh, that aren't any good and then share them. Uh, it's a neat little device. Uh, it's $250, uh, which is pretty expensive. Uh, have you checked out clips? Is this something that you, you would drop $250 on? I mean, it, it was one of the more interesting announcements, right? Uh, I, I just don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little afraid that the, it's definitely too expensive, right? So this isn't yeah. like when, when, when uh, Home came out. I like signed up at this point. Like as soon as you could order one, I got one. Yeah. And I love it. And I and that's my like last Christmas was that was my go to present. Uh, I got them for my employees. I got them for. Uh, I got one for the makerspace just for people to play around with because they were so cheap. Um, and they're really, really useful. And and this I feel like a little too expensive and a little like not useful enough to get me to the point where I want to buy one, I guess, is is where I'm at yeah. with this. I, so, so I'm holding off. I'm going to see. Like also, if people, you know, do the, if the reviews come out and, and people are using it and they're like, this is the best thing since sliced bread, everybody has, has to get one. Um, like, so for example, like I remember when Google glass came out, right. And Jason got his, uh, I think Leo got it, yep. gave it to Jason, whatever. <clears throat> and he had, I think he recorded what, the, like his kids first steps or something like that. Yes. Yeah. With the, Google the, glass. The classic, like that was the classic. I was Jason's not kids interested. Video. Yeah. yeah. I was not interested in it until I saw that. And then I was like, Oh wow. Like this is actually something kind of cool. Too bad. It's $1,500 at the time, but you know, this is actually something that could be useful. So I guess I'm waiting for that um, aha moment uh, when right. people actually get their hands on it before I decide to plunk down whatever it is, 250 bucks or something. Well, what's and I, I'm right there with you. I think this almost reminds me of back in the day with the flip cam cameras when like you, I saw it out there, people getting it. it I, I wasn't early with that. And then it wasn't until I saw other people adopting it and, and saying how awesome it was and how lightweight it was. And I was like, OK, I'll drop the money and get it. Um, where Google Home seemed to give you a way lot, gives you a ton of functionality for what you got in the package, and in this particular case, I mean, looking at the you know what this actually is, it's a tiny camera, right? That's um, you know it's 1.9 inches uh, in uh, diameter and it weighs 2.1 ounces. Um, you know, it's got a USB-C port, it's got Wi-Fi Direct and Bluetooth LE, and it's got a battery that that has got about up to three hours of image capture on it. So it's a it's an interesting little piece of hardware that they've created. Um, but it's like, I, you don't know what you're going to get, you know, like the idea is that you're going to like, I would get this, put it in the house and then see what happens. And that's the, it's kind of like, it feels almost like a, um, uh, like a flight of fancy almost, you know, <laughs> like, like it's, yeah. it's very, whim it's a whimsical device, I think. And, uh, if you're really, you know, like I, and I could see the case where, and a lot of their examples are kids where the idea where, you know, you've got your hands full with kids and you don't, you can't capture every moment. You just put this on the desk and then see what you get. 
that's kind of cool. But it's also like you don't know that you'll get anything. So, um, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, and I, I think what's 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 really interesting is going to be to see what folks who are into photography and into video and stuff like that who get their hands on this and then see what they do similar to GoPro that we right. never, you know, that we don't know what to expect, you know, like that's it, just it's, what it's, I was going to bring up too yeah. is GoPro. I mean, it seems like, you know, they could have taken that angle with it when they, when they brought it up is, is the GoPro thing, but they didn't, they chose to, f to focus on the AI and we're intelligently going to, you know, uh, uh, capture these moments based on what you're doing. And, and it also feels a little, the way they positioned it, it feels a little creepy. I'll be honest, like, oh yeah, just put it in your kitchen or, you know, whatever. And it, it'll just always be recording you. It's like, I, I'm, I'm, no, not yet. Let, let's let's wait and see. This is my approach to this. And, and, and what's what's interesting is that if you if you go on the Google Clips uh, section on on the Google Store on their website, they you know in their learn section, they're they're kind of explaining it because the concept is not you know every, we know of a camera like you take a picture and there it is, and they're trying to you know gently explain this process. And you know like I said, live preview when capturing, open the app and start live preview to see what your camera sees. So there's no viewfinder on the camera; you can see it through the app, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Um, then it, you know, it says capture what matters, you know, remote manual capture means you don't mean, need to be next to the camera to capture specific moments, just the, just the app on your phone. Uh, and then you can of course use live preview to see what's going on with it, right? The Google clips will, will learn to recognize familiar faces over time, which is no different than what Google, Google photos does. Like Google photos right. already knows my entire family. And when I'm looking for pictures of my niece, I just tap her face as opposed to typing her name or whatever. Um, but that's pretty cool that they're, they're, you know, it looks to be like, this is the leveraging of a lot of the AI they built in Google photos into a piece of hardware. Right. Uh, it could just is, be a proof point. Right. I mean, you know, if you think back to the Nexus Q, uh, yeah. which, you know, it, at the time it was like, ah, oh, it's a big flop. Like, you know, you know, they, they tried and they failed. It wasn't that good. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, two or three years later, we get Google Home. Yeah. Right. Which is eminently more useful. But I feel like there was a lot of good learning that went into Nexus Q, trying to d design and develop a device in the United States and doing all this other stuff. So, you know, maybe this is one of those products, right? It feels a little bit right now like they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist, maybe. Um, we got all this cool stuff and we want to find a way to show it off and, and show people how it could be used as an experiment, but, um, right. who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe, maybe everyone's going to love this thing. Who knows? So, so now that said, you're, you're a bit of a hardware guy, a maker and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, like I've come to you for electronics questions and things like that. Um, how much would you pay for this device? If 249 is too much, what is the price point that makes you go, yeah, I'll do that. And do you think given what's inside this thing, that's even possible? Because it feels like there's a lot of markup on this to me. If you look at what it's got in there, you know, it's got the lens, it's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth LE, USB-C connector. Like how much, you know, like couldn't this, couldn't this be a $99 device? Or, or cheaper, right? I mean, I can go yeah. buy a security webcam from China for like 30 bucks that is HD and shares all my photos and captures, it does motion capture and does night vision and all that kind of stuff. We've got them at the makerspace as part of our security system. So right. yeah, I'm with you. I, I, yeah, it definitely feels like there's too much markup. Now, what if they took this and bundled in Google Home, added a, added a speaker, right, and a microphone. So now you've got the, it's like Google Home with a camera, right? We, they, they are, they're already doing Google Home with a, with a uh, screen. What right. about Google Home with a camera? Or what about integrating this with Nest and I don't remember if that was part of the deal, but like, what about making this a security camera? And, in, and I know Nest has their own, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it just seems yeah, like yeah. it needs a little more. Right, and and I like the, the idea of I like the idea of the Google Home pairing almost with these you know Google Home devices with the screens, where you know instead of having to have the app open, you could just say, okay, Google Home, show me what Clip sees, and it just shows you the view from the viewfinder, and you could be playing with your kids and see the pictures that they're getting. That could be pretty cool. You yeah, know? or well, like, instead of say, relying. Say, hey, Say, okay, G, take a picture. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And, and instead of relying on the camera to make those decisions, uh, like I feel like there's some ambiguity there, where, like whether it's going to actually capture the moment that you're interested in. You could, and I know you can hit the button, right? So you could right. you could just force it. You could say, okay, Google, uh, capture this moment, right? Like it's it's we're about to sing happy birthday. My daughter just had her 16th birthday uh, this week <clears throat> or this weekend. So you could say, okay, Google, capture this moment, right? And then it 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 knows like I've got to record this and I've got to record it in high def and I'm gonna optimize my the internal hardware resources to make sure that this I, there's no hiccups in what, capturing this moment, right? I don't know, right? Just, and and, and, like and maybe there, 
maybe they're trying to monetize Google Photos in a way that because they've given so much for free and this is so much that AI. I don't know. But like I look at – have you seen uh, – there's that Polaroid Cube lifestyle HD yeah. camera, like that little square yep. camera. I mean that that's – I mean you can get that now for 75 to 99 bucks, right? And I get exactly. – and I get that – and I get that that's basically like a little GoPro and it's very similar to GoPro and that said, and it doesn't have a lot of the smarts that are in there or whatnot, but still like, I feel like 250 is, is almost a death sentence for this device. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm trying to think like, okay, it's a cool concept. If it was 150, would I pull the trigger on it? Maybe I think 150 is my ceiling. 99 would be a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm with you. And, and, you know, that's why, you know, I think a lot of people, uh, if they're with us, will probably be waiting for those Christmas deals for next Christmas, you know, yeah. like this thing's probably going to, they're going to be on some sort of huge sale or some, some promotion or something like that. And maybe then if, if there's some examples of where people are using it and it's really working, maybe then, you know, as the price comes down, I'll pull the trigger on it, but right. not, not right away. I'm not pre-ordering. Now again, again, to not to give away good ideas for free to Google, and I'm sure they thought of this, especially with YouTube. But if they're smart, they send boxes of these to all those YouTubers. Oh, absolutely! Right, like, like yeah. you know, and, and see and see what they do with it, right? Yeah, it, and you want and you want attachments. So right now, it's got the little clip, <clears throat> right? But what about the helmet attachment? What about the uh, bicycle attachment? What about the you know what I'm saying? Like, go after that GoPro yeah. market a little bit. It could, yeah. could be a thing. Yeah, and and also keep in mind, and it's mentioned in the chat room, it doesn't record audio. This so it's just taking photos, and you know, like so it's pretty much it's not even a video camera to that degree. It's just still camera. So that's even for two fifty two forty nine, it becomes even a tougher sell. But yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, so now usually, like a device like this, I did not pull the trigger on Google Clips. I did not pre order one. Um, but when they did announce the Google Pixel Buds, I did pull the trigger and I pre-ordered them. Um, it took forever for them to ship, but I finally got them. Uh, and as I mentioned, I, 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 what, the day I got them, I had them on the show and I said I was going to use them for a while and talk and kind of do an in-depth review about them. Before I do that, though, Aaron, before the, 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 uh, the sponsor break, you had some pretty harsh words for the lack of a, uh, uh, a headphone jack on the Pixel 2. Uh, what, what you thinking there? You think it's a bad decision? It's an awful decision. Are you kidding me? It's, <laughs> it, you know, it, so, so number, number one, you're following Apple's lead at this point, right? Yeah. Um, the only clear explanation that there is, is that you're, you've, you've, you've signed some deal with, with some OEMs that are going to manufacture these things, not only the, the pixel buds, but the rest of the market as well. Um, and you're pandering to that. I want to have the option of pulling out the headphones that I'm using right now, uh, and, and put them in there. And I've had to do that. Like the batteries run out on my, um, I have some really nice, uh, Bluetooth stereo headphones that are noise canceling and all the rest, but you know, and the battery lasts for a long time, but sometimes I forget to plug it in and then you're just stuck. What do you do? The battery's dead on your, on your, on your Bluetooth, uh, headphones. What do you do? You, you, nothing, yeah. you, you turn it on speaker and annoy all your people sitting next to you. Which is so. which is which is forbidden on the subway. Let me tell you. And and I was I was actually on a plane uh, over the weekend, and uh, a woman got on the plane and had her phone. She's watching something with no headphones. We're just sitting there, and like the flight attendant's like, "Ma'am, can you put some headphones in or turn that off?" And she just ignored oh, yeah. her. And like they had to ask like three times, and she got all annoyed that she couldn't. It was it was very a strange situation. Well, anyway. I've been somewhat pro the removal of the headphone jack because I don't want to stifle innovation. And I feel like these companies are, uh, if they're removing it, they're removing it for a reason. I'm a believer that Bluetooth LE is is uh, uh, advancing and getting better every year. And the spec gets better and better, uh, ignoring everything I know um, that I hear from engineers who work on the Bluetooth spec uh, who tell me otherwise. But still, <laughs> um, but also, you know, because of that reason, because I haven't been and I'm with you. Like if if you if you have Bluetooth uh, headphones and the battery dies and there's no headphone jack, you're SOL. Like there's nothing you can do. That does suck. Um, but I I want to move towards a wireless future. I want to move where these this stuff just works. So I want to believe. So I I plop my money down. I got the Google Pixel Buds and I've been using them as my daily headphones uh, option for my commute, for travel, and everything for the past three weeks or so. Um, and I gotta admit, I kind of love them. Um, now that said, I do cat, I have a pixel one, which has a headphone jack and I do carry a backup pair of wired headphones in my bag just in case, but I have not had them die on me. I have not had an opportunity where like it, it didn't work. Like every time I've gotten to use them, they've worked fine. Um, you know, and honestly, I don't even remember the last time I charged it, to be honest with you. Um, the, I am getting a little yellow light on the charging dock that the battery is running low on the, on the charger. 
You can uh, hang on, I'll hit, press the button there. You can see that there. So the yellow light, normally that's green, meaning it's fully charged. So I do need to plug this in. I'm glad I checked that. Um, but the headphones are, at, I, I think last I checked, they're like 75%. Like, so the battery drain is not dramatic on them. Uh, if the sound quality is good, I'm listening to, I'm listening my, mainly to podcasts, but I, of course I'm a big music fan, listen to music and the, uh, and because of that, I go to a lot of live shows and so I'm half deaf. So that said, I might be missing out on some of the dynamic high and low end, but, uh, but for my needs, it sounds great. Um, my only complaints about it in using it in practical use is that I think that the, the interface is super cool. The tapping, as you can see here in the photo, for those of you who are watching the show, um, you can tap the right earbud, and that's how basically you control the device. So if you want to press play or pause you just, uh, on what you're listening to, you just tap it once. Um, if you want to talk to Google Assistant, have it read your messages, give you your notifications, you double tap it and it plays it. If you want to turn the volume up, you swipe right. Or no, you swipe forward. If you want to turn the volume down, you swipe backward. Um, so there's a whole bunch of kind of gesture controls, which are great in theory when they're in your ear. But when you're putting them in your ear or taking them out of your ear, I tend to start and stop my podcast a lot, right? Because you're still touching it. It's still an active interface spot. So there have been times where like I've been in my apartment and my, and my wife goes, what is that noise? And I realize I'm, my podcast is playing and nobody's listening to it because the headphones are on the desk. And I accidentally touched, I actually pressed play when I put them down. So a little clunky as, uh, in, that, in that regard. You get a little used to it. Um, I, have, um, I haven't used the translate function of it because I haven't uh, gone abroad. I haven't you know, kind of integrated with Google Translate. Plus also I only have the Pixel 1. I don't have the Pixel 2, um, which it does. The translating does work with Pixel, but it, it's, see, I, from what I've read, works better with the Pixel 2. Um, but the... Getting the messages worked great. Um, when I first got them, it only worked with text messages. And then like a week ago or so, it started working with WhatsApp, which is my main messaging platform, which is a wonderful uh, surprise. Um, and I was able to you know, hear my messages. I'm on the subway. I got a mess message. It, assistant read it back to me. I tapped to respond. I said the response. It got the it got it, it captured my voice perfectly, sent the text message. I never took the phone out of my pocket. That's a cool moment. Like that's very, very cool. Um, the, I was a little skeptical of the cord design. I don't really love the, the string that goes behind your neck. Like I don't like the people to see it, but then, um, I figured out how to use the little loops at the top of it to fit in your ear correctly. And now they fit snug and nice. You can see there, you know, there's a little, there's a little adjustable loop that can, you can make bigger or smaller based off your ear size. Um, now I've got it. So they fit snug and perfect and they don't fall out. Um, so I got to admit, not having a cord running from my head down to my pocket on the crowded New York City subway, there have been numerous times where the phone's been ripped out of my hand because somebody's backpack got snagged on my headphones and you know, like that sort of situation. That hasn't happened once since I've been using these. Um, I kind of like a wireless life. It's I, I got to admit, Aaron, I, it's, they've, they've made a bit of a, uh, a, a convert out of me. So. so so I also like a wireless life. Yep. Um, and... <laughs> That doesn't mean that I lose the headphone jack fair, on my fair. phone, right? <laughs> I, I, I listen. I have wireless headphones that I listen to uh, every day on my commute, and uh, they work great. The battery, everything you said that you like about these, um, with the addition that minor noise canceling. I'm assuming these don't have active noise canceling, correct? Um, I don't know actually. No, they don't have active noise canceling. To be yeah, yeah. They don't. So. so I get active noise canceling as well. And I still have the option if my battery dies to plug in my headphones. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so, so I think there are two separate issues. It sounds like you like the the, the uh, Pixel Buds, regardless of the the yes. headphone jack issue. Yes. Cool. But uh, so this isn't a this isn't a support or condemnation of no headphone jack. But right. if we're living in a world with no headphone jack, I, with these earbuds, I'm I'd be okay. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually so, think this is really good, though. I think this is really good because. Uh, you know, Google's kind of new to this space, to the hardware space. They haven't had necessarily the best track record when it comes to hardware. Um, so to hear that they've done some earphones well, I will say, to be generous, is really nice. I'm glad that yeah. they are working. And I hope this is the direction that Google is going to be going with its hardware in the future. And, and it's funny because I, I poked around to look at what the other reviews are and what the other folks are saying. And they just got destroyed on these. Like a lot of the reviewers, and I feel like a lot of the reviewers were – a little too harsh on it. A big complaint was the fact that the really super 
cool whiz bang features are only available on the pixel and the pixel two, which I get. Right. right. But you know, but that, that's the name of the game now it's, it's extra features. You know, that's the, that's the product differentiator, um, in, in terms of their competition. Um, but audio quality wise, they were fine for me. Like, you know, I do love music. I listen mainly to podcasts on my commute, but I, I consider myself an audiophile. I have, you, you see in the background, I got a record player and nice little clip speakers and stuff like that. But like, for this type of listening, I don't need the four hundred dollar high dynamic range headphones, or whatever. I'm just riding the subway for twenty minutes, you know. Like so, um, they weren't bad. They, you know. So um, yeah. Let me ask you one more question. I don't know if you've tested this yeah. out, but um, you said that you were able to speak to it on the subway and have it interpret your voice correctly for a text message. What yep. about a conference call? Are you are you? Did, have you done um, any conference calls with them? And it does it does it? You get the same results. I haven't done conference calls, but I've done phone calls. Um, I, you know, I called my sister as I'm walking down the street and talked to her. And oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know why. Were, I, said, yeah. I said conference calls. I'm sitting in front of a polycom uh, conference. Right, yeah, call. that's probably why. Yeah, well, no, just, but I can understand. I, I can understand because sometimes conference calls, those weird bridge lines, they, you know, the, the sound yeah, yeah, quality yeah. is the best or whatever. But the phone call quality, like I didn't tell her I was using them, and she didn't say I can't hear you or you sound great. So I assume okay. that it was fine. You know, I assume it that's was fine. That's good. That's yeah. good because I have that problem um, on the 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 ones the headphones that I use today. I usually call my wife or my kids or whatever on the way on my way from the work to the ferry, and you know it's noisy out on the street. There's there's yep. horns honking. There's people talking. There's just lots of ambient noise, and it's really hard for people to hear me um, if I'm on if I if I try to use them outside of an office setting. So right. so that's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I walked down uh, Fifth Avenue and 50th Street in, in Manhattan and had a phone conversation and no complaint. So that's good. Yeah. So I, I give the Pixel Buds a, a, a general thumbs up. I'm not as, you know, super techy as some of the other reviewers that are out there. But for my needs, my just daily use, like they're, they're they stay charged. I can hear them. They don't fall out of my ear. I've got the nuance of the interface down now so that I'm not you know doing it too much. Um and, you know, like, and, and again, I sent, you know, responded to a text message without taking the phone out of my pocket. I feel like that's a major moment, uh, which yeah. is pretty cool. So, yeah. Yep. So Google Pixel Buds, if you, if you pick them up, if you, uh, any of our listeners out there have had experience with them, write in, let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear what other people think of them as well. Uh, but that's not it. It's time to talk about something other than Google. Uh, in fact, Samsung, uh, Samsung Galaxy Unpacked 28 is coming. Uh, it's going to be at Mobile World Congress on February 25th. They're going to be doing their Unpacked event, and the teaser there is the camera reimagined. So uh, we're we're uh, you know assuming, and with the big nine there and the invitation logo there, that we'll be seeing the uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. Um, the Unpacked celebration starts at 12 p.m. Eastern time on February 25th, um, and it's going to be of course during Mobile World Congress and. Uh, you could probably guess based off that tagline that they're going to be focused on photos and photography, probably not a major design change. That's the, that's the, that's the guess here with this uh, teaser. Um, but of course there are no, uh, there are no uh, surprises anymore left in the world. And actually venture beat had a whole bunch of specs on what the galaxy S nine and S nine plus is going to be. So even before the announcement, we have uh, some indication of what these phones will look like and they don't look that much different from the galaxy S S eight and S uh, S eight plus. Um, they're really going to be focused on kind of what's inside, uh, the phones themselves, whether the, the hardware components and software, um, as well as starting to show some drifting in the two models. Um, for instance, uh, the rumor is that the Galaxy uh, S9 Plus is going to have 6 gig, six gig of RAM and 128 gig of internal storage, while the S9 will just have 4 gig of RAM and 64 gig, um, which you know widens the gap between the two uh, between the two phones. Uh, but some of the other rooms, uh, rumors are that you know they're going to be focused on cameras and imaging software, um, a super slow mo video capture uh, mode, which will uh, rapid movement will trigger 480 uh, FPS recording at 720p. Um, and both devices are going to feature variable aperture on the 12 megapixel cameras. Um, and the Galaxy S9 is going to add a second 12 megapixel real module. Um, but a big uh, interesting thing is that all of the elements on the back of the phone are rumored to be uh, aligned vertically instead of horizontally like the S8. So the fingerprint uh, scanner will uh, be located more naturally at the bottom of that vertical uh, stack of components there. Um, and, uh, and then of course, uh, a welcome change is that we'll have uh, stereo speakers 
uh, on the device, yeah. which is new to the Samsung. So, uh, what do you what do you make of these, Aaron? Are the the these kind of uh, these rumored specs get you excited about this next Samsung phone? Uh, not especially. I've, ne I've never been. The last Galaxy I had was a Samsung Galaxy S4, um, and since then. I don't know. Everything's iterative now, right? It's just like small, tiny, incremental changes. I mean, if they do have something like whiz bang feature for the camera, I guess that'll be good. Um, I don't know. It's getting to feel a little bit like they're just putting these, you know, they're expected to do something every year, like come out with the new right. phone and people are going to buy it. So why not? Uh, but this is, yeah, it's not really, uh, you know, the, well, the better F stop is nice. Um, that that's the thing to your point, though, with these announcements being every year or less than a year, we're not going to see a major like like when we had that major design change, I think around the S7 or so, you know, it, it, it those major changes are going to happen every two to three years. And announcements right. like this are going to be like, we we fixed the camera, we're doing something else with software or whatnot, you know, so it's these iterative changes, these incremental changes um, that hopefully are enough to be a bang for the buck. But I, I just hate the pace that they put these new phones out. I think that they're, I think yeah. it's too much too soon. So. I think it is too. And I think a lot of people, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have numbers to back this up. If I was a little bit more prepared, maybe I could um, do that. But I think that people are trending to keep their, they're going to be keeping their phones longer because there's not, it's not like you can't run the latest thing on your phone, right? Unless... Right. You're in a situation where Google didn't release it for other phones. They're only they're keeping it for Pixel for some reason. But you know, pretty much any app you want to run is going to run. So I haven't found anything that doesn't run on my Pixel XL. So that's another reason why I haven't bought a Pixel too. And I think the same things here with Samsung. I mean, I I, I kind of like the. It looks like they've gotten rid of a little bit of the bezel maybe on these new. Uh, uh, that bezel gets, that are, gets, that up, gets smaller and smaller with every iteration. But yeah, I, I actually, know, I kind of, cool, I kind of like this design with the black, with the bezel that they do have. That yeah. black kind of, you know, that, that is kind of cool. If it, if that ends right. up being the actual phone, so yeah. And um, I do like the stereo speakers. I will say that's one thing I really do miss on my. Uh, so I went from a uh, Nexus Six P, uh, you know, super huge phone to the uh, Google Pixel XL. And I and uh, well, almost every day, anytime I listen to, to something I really want to listen to, like a YouTube video or something, and I'm not using my headphones, I'm like, oh, I really miss the stereo speakers. Like I didn't think I would, but I really miss it. Um, it makes a big difference. So I'm really glad to hear that they're putting in stereo speakers. That's great. Yeah. And and the thing is that there are people who use Samsung phones as that that, that they're they're excited for this. They're on the Samsung ecosystem. So if you've sure. been on an S7 or if you're on an S8 and you want the newest, latest, greatest, this is what you're going to be paying attention to. So, um, yep. but yeah, but but the interesting thing is about that expansion in terms of the memory with the S9 Plus having 128 gig and the S9 just having 64 gig. We are seeing storage uh, prices come down and kind of storage options somewhat ballooning on phones. And uh, we take a big step uh, with Vivo's X-Play 7, which was recently announced. Um, uh, actually, the, some, some information was leaked recently. And uh, the Vivo X-Play 7 is uh, expected and rumored to come with up to 512 gigabyte of storage with a starting capacity of 256 gig. Um, so we're going to go from, I remember the days of 16 gig on your phone to having half a terabyte on your phone, which is just crazy. Um, uh, Why, not? Why not? Yeah, exactly. And in addition, the Vivo X Play Seven uh, might be one of the first phones with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 uh, chipset, uh, which is definitely a, a major step. And on top of that, uh, they're going to be adding the uh, in-display fingerprint sensor underneath the 18.9 OLED display, 18.9 uh, ratio OLED display, um, and they're going to offer Face ID 2.0 for facial recognition. So Vivo on the scene with the X-Play 7, if these rumors are true, to be uh, to, to have a real powerhouse of a little phone there with that, with with, it, with half half a terabyte of storage. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's kind of crazy. But do, do they also have the fingerprint uh, sensor on the back? No. So, so that, the that's the thing. The we're, we're, see, we're seeing more and more phones get the uh, like the Samsung S8 had this actually. I think the Samsung S8 with um, not so much with the fingerprint sensor, but with the capacitive button underneath the display. And now they're moving that in the direction of a fingerprint sensor that is underneath the bottom of the display that that works. It's 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 actually pretty cool. Um, well, it's pretty cool, but it's a, it's also. I mean, I guess if it's your thumb, maybe I'm just trying to think of how that would work in in real life. If it's your thumb, if you're using yeah. that as your fingerprint, I guess that would work. I really like having my uh, fingerprint sensor on the back because I can hold it in one hand 
and I yep. can unlock it really easily. And the fingerprint sensor has been super, super reliable on my Pixel XL. So it's really easy for me to just hold it, hit the button, <clears throat> everything opens up, and then I can use my thumb to navigate around so I can do everything one-handed. Um, and I really like that. I feel like if it's on the screen, I'm just trying to well, play with this. Well, like, I don't it's, it's, know if it works. It's funny because I, I was using the Moto, uh, the Moto, I forget the number, but the Moto X, uh, the four, uh, the four X2 Force. The one with the uh, expandable uh, snap-on kind of devices, mm -hmm. and that had a fingerprint scanner not on the display, but in, in a physical button at the bottom of the screen. And then I moved to the Pixel, and which has the back fingerprint uh, sensor on the back of it. And for a while, that that index finger fingerprint scan felt so foreign to me because yeah. I was so used to doing the the thumb, like I would just swipe down on the thumb and then do what I need to. But now, like you. I pick up someone else's phone and my finger just, you know, muscle memory Goes gravitates to, to that spot. Yeah. So yep. it just takes a little training, I think. So yeah. It certainly would be helpful in the car. That's the one place where I don't like having the fingerprint sensor on the back is in the car when I've got it in my dock uh, and yep. I'm driving along. You got to reach around behind it and put your finger on it. It's like, eh, it's kind of jinky. Otherwise, I, I like I like the placement where it's at. So we'll see. Nothing, nothing worse than the smartphone reach around. That's what they That's always right. say. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got I got Oreo balls in one hand and the smartphone reach around in the other. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Anyway, can't uh, wait to see what this episode is going to be titled. <laughs> this, this is what happens. When this is what happens when Jason leaves me alone. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I'm better than that. So would that uh, be your right. new rating system too? Like how many, yeah. how many <laughs> Oreo balls you'd? <laughs> I'll give this one three Oreo balls. <laughs> So, all right. So, anyway, let's move on. Um, Jerry writes That's a in with wise an email. Decision right there. <laughs> yes, it is. Jer Jerry writes in with an email regarding last week's email, looking for ways to limit mobile data data usage on a per app basis. Uh, and Jerry uh, informs us that Google now has an app that restricts apps from being able to access the internet over mobile data. The app is called Datally. It launched very quietly, but works pretty well. Not sure why they chose to release it as an app instead of a feature of Android itself. So much like Files Go, which we talked about uh, two weeks ago, you know, Google's been quietly putting out these little apps that are a really des designed really well and b really handy and useful. Um, so Files Go is one, and now this Datally, which is I was looking at it, and it's you know, it's it's mobile data saving. That's what it does. You say, hey, listen, that app I know is a hog. I'm limited on my mobile data. Don't use mobile data. Only use it on Wi-Fi. Um, really kind of cool. Uh, I dig it a lot. I've been playing with it ever since we got this email. Um, I'm on unlimited data, so I don't really worry that much about this stuff, but, um, but I know, you know, a lot of people aren't. And so if you're worried about that, this is a good way to control it. So Datally, it's free in the Google Play Store. Um, again, like so similar to Microsoft Garage a couple of years ago, Google quietly, are they testing these apps? I don't even know what the strategy is here. Yeah, because I haven't heard about this, and this is actually uh, super useful. This is a great solution yeah. because you know otherwise you got to turn the other way to do it. Of course, is to either you know turn off your Wi-Fi or go into battery saver mode um, if yep. you have a phone that supports that. So, uh, but you, it, but a lot of times you just want to turn off whatever it is that that one app, right? That's that's you can see like holy crap, it's this one app that's eating all my data. I just want to yep. turn that off. Uh, the other cool thing with this would be to be able to turn that on or off automatically with something like Tasker. <clears throat> I don't know if that if that intelligence is built into Datally, but um, it would be cool to say like, well, I'm, you know, obviously when I'm on Wi-Fi, I don't care. Um, uh, you said you've used it. Does it do that? Like when I'm on Wi-Fi? Yeah, whatever. It, it, but, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't pick up the location side of it. It's mainly just app uh -huh. based. So it's, um, but yeah, I agree with you. That location would be fantastic. Maybe I just haven't discovered it. Yeah. I mean, I just played with it this afternoon. Um, but uh, yeah, having it that location based, like, okay, you're here, unlock these apps or whatever would be an interesting integration. Um, yeah, but sure. I really, I really bet that they're putting these apps out there and they're gathering user data. They're seeing how many downloads they're getting. They're seeing what, you know, what the experiences are. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing these in future releases of Android. I mean, files go, yeah. if you haven't played with files go yet, uh, Aaron, it's, I mean, it's a, uh, amazing, uh, data storage analysis and helper app that looks at your data in a way I've never even looked at before. Like it, it just uh, last night, it gave me a, uh, a notification. I had 165 meg of duplicate files. 
Hmm. Like, you know, like every time I add a photo, like I send someone a photo in WhatsApp, it gets saved in the WhatsApp directory and in my Google Photos directory. It's like the same photo. It knows it. Let's delete the older one or let's delete, you know, like it's really, really smart. It had a, we were when we demoed it on the show, they have a whole section to I think I had like six, six megabyte of memes. And it identified right. those as those kind of, you know, which are throwaways, you know, throwaway data, throwaway media. So really, really smart. Um, curious, you know, if, if daily uh, similar, there's files go for our viewers there. Um, really just smart I implementations of what you could do with Android. And it's coming from inside Google. It's got to be for a reason. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't checked that. I'm going to check that out too, man. I got to yeah. get on the show more often. All these great tips yeah. and ideas. <laughs> And we want to thank our last sponsor of the evening, LegalZoom, for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Uh, now that the New Year's madness is over, it's time to work on your story for 2018. LegalZoom can help you make this the year you finally get serious about launching and running your own business. As a matter of fact, LegalZoom has been helping people just like you take care of their dreams and responsibilities for more than 16 years. LegalZoom offers white glove service for business owners, everything you need to run your business so you don't have to worry about compliance or when things are due. Services include tax consultation, intellectual property, payroll, employee handbooks, and business compliance. Now, LegalZoom is not a law firm, but they have the resources to keep you on the right path, including advice from their nationwide network of independent attorneys all at your fingertips. They can also help you rest a little easier knowing that your family's future is squared away with the right estate plan. So whether you want to take your business to the next level or take control of your family's future with an estate plan, LegalZoom plugs right into your life without billing you by the hour. Because at LegalZoom, all pricing is given up front. So start writing your 2018 story at LegalZoom.com now. And for special savings, be sure to enter promo code AAA in the referral box at checkout. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. That's promo code AAA for special savings at LegalZoom.com. And we thank them for their support. All right. Let's get, we got some apps to talk about. Let's do that. All right, well, we can't stop talking about Google sometimes. Sometimes it happens. But uh, Bulletin from Google is a new app that they announced and have a uh, sign up for. Uh, and it's basically, I'm going to read this verbatim from their from their little Bulletin website, which is uh, at uh, post.google.com slash bulletin slash share. Uh, it says, Bulletin is an app for contributing hyper-local stories about your community for, for your community right from your phone. Bulletin makes it effortless to put a spotlight on inspiring stories that aren't being told. Uh, so immediately I was like, oh, they're going after Nextdoor. Maybe I'm wrong. That could be. Yeah. I mean, it's a hyper local kind of I and I, I like the I like the concept of it like you know, helps you tell stories that aren't being told, like that sort of thing, stories about your neighborhood and things like that. But it's a hyper local community kind of guidebook, you know, with UGC. It, it seems a lot like Nextdoor, and and uh, while Nextdoor tends to be a little more of the community bulletin board kind of type, like I'm looking for a house, uh, you know, house cleaner or a lawn mowing service or whatnot, you, you got to imagine this is going to end up like bulletin. It's going to end up being people posting in their community about what they're looking for. Um, curious what comes of it. It looks like I filled out the form to sign up for it, and it looks like they're going to be testing it in Nashville and in Oakland, uh, which should be curious. But if you are in those areas. I encourage you to check out Bulletin and maybe sign up, get your hands on the app. I doubt they're going to send it to me, but uh, seems kind of neat. Yeah, they really the messaging really focuses around stories, telling stories. Yep. Uh, easily tell a story, capture a photo and tell a story. Um, so what's what's not here? What's interesting to me is like this seems like the perfect kind of thing that you would use also for like a, a community selling, you know, Craigslist yeah. kind of thing, which Nextdoor yeah. does as well. Um, yeah. I've sold things on Nextdoor and gotten rid of free stuff on Nextdoor. It works pretty well for that. So, uh, but but they're focusing on the story. And they and the other thing that's interesting about this, I don't know if if you're like me, but um, you know, I use Google Maps all the time, and I started doing reviews on Go more reviews on Google, less on like Yelp and those kinds of things. And uh, and Google, they 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 have a concerted effort, a reach out effort around. Uh, curating the the reviews and the photos and the you know take a yep. photo while you're in Target. Uh, people want to know. I'm like I don't know if they really want to know uh, about Target, <laughs> but you, I get those I get those things. Like take a photo. Yeah. I see you're here. Take a photo. Well, um, they have that. That's that's from the that's from the Google local guides uh, program. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm as, part of that, and, they, and they've done a pretty good job about you know doing the 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 re- rewards, you know, oh, you know, what's your rank and and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool. So I'm just wondering if that is um, if their efforts there have opened up an opportunity. They feel like for a you know some something something further, something a little different than the local guide experience. Or uh, uh, what was the other one that they had with when they had Niantic? What was that app? Uh, uh, backpack, not backpack. Uh, Oh, it was the like the 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 adventure app or whatever it was, like the local what was that? Yeah. Um can't remember the name of it. Uh chat room will tell us, I'm sure. Yeah, um, I'm sure. But Niantic yeah, Labs I, came out with it before Discovery, they came out with that was, game. Or field trip, field trip. Sorry, field, field trip. trip. That was it. Field trip. That's it. That was close. Yep. I said backpack. Yeah, uh, you got yeah, yeah. Take a backpack on a field trip. Anyway. Yep. Um yeah, so it seems like maybe they're maybe they're coming back around to that concept again as well. You want to know what's, um, you in, know what's crazy? Ways. So I just pulled up Field Trip on the Google Play Store, and Victor, I'm going to throw it in the chat there. I'm going to share it with everybody. I haven't thought about this in ages. The last time Field Trip was updated was May 13, 2015. Sure. I and it. so you you think about what happened between 2015 and now? Oh, Pokemon Go! Like this is. Yep. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, field trip. I remember that. It's your world. Explore it. That was their uh, the, the 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 tagline there. I had. I, um, I always have this problem. I don't know if you have this problem. You think of an idea, and then as soon as you like get serious about thinking about it, like somebody solved it already. Um, well, so, well. So, so here's the here's the argument to that. As someone who, who's had lots of ideas that other people have done as well, that's validation of your idea. And the question is, can you do oh, it yeah. better? Yeah, so. <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. You're such a glass half full kind of a guy. Uh, yeah. You know, I thought I thought about like a like a music curation system uh, yeah. marketed towards uh, Hollywood and like people trying to find the right uh, music for a movie based on a genre or a mood, you know, and cool. then like literally like the next month Pandora came out. And then <laughs> uh, same thing with this, like with or not with this, but with uh, uh, Backpack, whatever it's called, um, Field Trip. So I, I had this idea like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could just like use your phone and do record a uh, uh, a walking tour, like a walking tour of San Francisco and put your personal spin on it. And then if it was really good, people would pay for it. Uh, and then field trip came out and I was like, ah, crap. Uh, so I don't know. I got to stop having these ideas. That's the answer. No more ideas oh, for no. me because I just get disappointed. <laughs> Have the ideas, just uh, see them through. That's all. <laughs> no, yeah. I've been in the I gotta same have place. Them sooner. I got to have them earlier. That's the point. Yeah. Get a time Back machine. Faster. There you go. So, well, we well go. here's a cool idea that actually got built, which uh, this actually was news a couple of weeks ago, and it slipped through the cracks, and I wanted to bring it up here because I think it's really fascinating. Um, Aaron, have you heard of this app called Weehee? W e h e. Oh. Okay. So Wee-hee. this was an this was an app that was developed uh, at Northeastern University, and it actually uh, made the news because they released it both simultaneously on Android and on iOS, and the uh, Apple pulled it from the App Store, um, only to then put it back uh, later on. Uh, so it did get restored to the App Store, but it got some notoriety by being pulled from it. Um, this is a research app by Northwestern, uh, by Northeastern University, and I think the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, where they're gathering data to have you run tests on your phone to test your carrier to see if they're throttling services such as YouTube, Netflix, Skype, uh, NBC Sports, Vimeo, um, and other things like that to see if your carrier is actually throttling services in alignment with net neutrality rules or not. Uh, and the goal is to fill a public database of carrier behavior. So if you're on wow. T-Mobile or AT&T, you can say, oh, wow, they're throttling Netflix pretty badly or whatnot. Um, I ran it on mine on T-Mobile, and, and Netflix came back throttled at about at about 60% of, of what it should be. Um, so, yeah, you see there they've got Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Netflix. Um, really kind of interesting, really, uh, really kind of fascinating in that, uh, uh, that it's a way to kind of – gather this data about the carriers and hopefully keep them in check if anything changes with net neutrality as the FCC seems to want to be doing. So, Wow, this is really interesting. I'm installing it right this minute, but I do have yeah. a question. So like I use T-Mobile and they do, um, they do some throttling based on your connection, not only based on uh, whatever else, you know, yeah. deals that they've signed with other companies, whatever, like they, like, it's like, oh, you have a poor connection. So we're going to give you the 360 P version of that video you want to watch. Um, because we know that you're, you're not able to stream the, the 720 P or the, t- the 1080 P version. Right. I wonder, is this smart enough to detect when that's a, re- 
that's a really good question. I don't I don't know. Um, I don't know if they because that because that's smart on you on on T Mobile side is that if you have a poor connection, they're gonna meter the app based off your connection that sort of thing. Um, I that's we should look into that to see if they actually are smart enough to realize that. Um, but yeah, download it, check it out, play with it. Um, I, you know, and there, there's a there's a very long not long but at least a very honest and upfront disclaimer at the front of it of what you're agreeing to and what data they're getting. It is meant, right. it is a public research project. You know, there's nothing, you know, kind of, um, I, I ch looked into it. it, doesn't appear as if there's any personal information being transferred or, you know, any sort of weird permissions or anything like that. That looks like they did it on the up and up. Um, and, you know, we're all worried about net neutrality. And I think this is a great first step in terms of keeping our carriers kind of, uh, you know, accountable for the services that they're giving us. So. Hmm. Cool. So it's called Wehe, W-E-H-E. -E. So, um, all right. Well, quick moving on through these apps. Um, Alcatel is a phone manufacturer that's out there in the world running Android apps. And uh, recently they replaced their default uh, photo gallery app uh, with, uh, with a different app that is being branded as uh, spamware. Um, Alcatel users woke up to find that their uh, their uh, photo gallery app was removed and replaced with Candy Gallery, where you can photo photo edit video editor pick collage. Um, not developed by them, developed by a developer called High Art Studio. Um, and when you uh, run the app and install it, it asks for permissions uh, that include the device ID information, SMS access, Wi-Fi connection info, and enough to throw up everybody's kind of. Uh, uh, you know, to th throw some warnings in users to say, hey, this doesn't seem right. So uh, this, this is a weird choice by Alcatel. Buyer beware. Or yeah, so installer if you're, if you're, beware. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, if, if you have, so the fine folks at Android Police looked into it. They reached out to Alcatel. They have not gotten a response yet. So if you are on an Alcatel uh, phone, take a look at your phone uh, your phone to see if you've got this app. You might want to be careful. So, yep. Yeah. And finally, uh, even though Flo is not here, I'm sure she'd want us to talk about Nintendo's Mitomo, uh, which was Nintendo's first foray into the world of mobile uh, apps and mobile games. Uh, Mitomo actually wasn't even a game. It was more of like a Nintendo-based social network kind of environment. Uh, and turns out it generated, uh, according to reports, only about $3 million in revenue to date, uh, about half of which is attributed to in-app purchases on an of Android users. Um, Nintendo decided they're going to discontinue the app and discontinue the service. Um, it's actually ironically ending on May 9th, which is my birthday and, uh, smack dab in the middle of Google IO and right around Flo's birthday. So, uh, <laughs> there's a little early birthday present for Florence and that she won't be able to play me Tomo anymore. Um, but yeah, so they said that about, uh, 20 million downloads uh, of the app happened since it came out, uh, on both Android and iOS and they boast around uh, 500,000 monthly active users, of which 200,000 are Android users. Um, and you know, basically, it just didn't make it as much money as they as they uh, wanted it to. So they they tested it, they put it out there, and it didn't didn't work. Of course, the you know their next foray was uh, Super Mario Run. So uh, that's probably been a little more uh, when you actually do games. I think you have better uh, better results there. So I can't say I'm surprised by this. Yeah, not at all. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you we almost need to turn this uh, this the app section. Uh, do you ever see like uh, uh, on Jimmy Fallon the uh, uh, what's that segment called? Like, do not read or something. No, uh, do not <laughs> read these books. Right, like yeah. like we almost you almost need like a do not install these apps. Right, like uh, uh, <laughs> some sort of some sort of section where it's just like you know watch out for these apps. Uh, Warning, yeah. Get you. Like or, or even, you know, you can even highlight apps that are just like really, really bad. Like, well, I, it's <laughs> can you believe this is store. a real app? Oh, my word. Yeah, the, the thousands and thousands of, uh, of of various weird apps that are out there. Like we, we've evolved yeah. from the farting apps to uh, weird soundboard apps and things like that. That's right. crazy. Right. Well, and the number of people that are just, uh, uh, you, you know, an app will become popular and they'll put an app out that's very similar with a very similar logo um, and you know, some kid or something who doesn't know any better could easily install those apps, um, not yeah. knowing what, that they're not their actual app. So you gotta be careful with this stuff. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, That's my speaking fatherly of apps, advice for this episode, <laughs> it's a good thing we had you, Aaron. We need, we need hey, some kids. sage advice. Yes. <laughs> I'm a little Watch too reckless for those apps, apps. kids. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get to the, uh, arena, 
Uh, we got one more email from Philip Morales who writes in and says, I'm an auto journalist and I recently attended the Detroit and Houston auto shows where Ram debuted their 2019 Ram 1500, which comes equipped with an enormous 12 inch infotainment screen in the cabin. The Ram's Uconnect software is compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but once your phone is connected and Android Auto is initiated, the screen is split horizontally. This means that Android Auto shares the screen space with Uconnect, and the driver can display a variety of other Uconnect apps in the lower half of the screen. It looks very much like split-screening apps inside Android on a smartphone or tablet. To my knowledge, this is the first time an auto manufacturer has utilized software and touchscreen real estate in this way. I found it extremely interesting because while I'm a fan of Android Auto and use it from time to time while reviewing cars, I find myself switching back and forth between Google software and the vehicle's UI because there are typically aspects of each that I appreciate. I actually enjoy using the Uconnect UI that comes in the Ram 1500, so I like the idea that I can enjoy Android Auto and portions of the Uconnect system on the same screen. For instance, I can have Google Music playing on the upper portion of the screen through Android Auto and have the Uconnect navigation app or vehicle information app running on the lower portion of the screen. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the potential of Android Auto utilized on a split screen like this. Uh, and Philip, that I mean, I did not hear of this, and looking at this uh, shot of uh, the, the the cockpit of this uh, Ram uh, 2019 uh, Ram 1500. This looks really cool. Like this is this is future stuff. Yeah, I love this idea. Um, I I don't know about you, but I've tried Android Auto. I don't use it regularly. I keep trying it, thinking uh, I'm gonna love it. It's it's gonna work yeah. great. I don't have a car with it built in, so when they when they allowed you to start using it, just you know on your phone, um, I definitely tried it out. But it wasn't as useful as I wanted it to be. Like it was, I, maybe it's again going back to muscle memory. Like I just know where things are on my phone. I don't have to really take my eyes off the road anymore. I just hit the button and it plays NPR or whatever it is. So. Um, but I really like this idea about having the split screen and being able to, because there's a lot of times, uh, uh, one of our cars, you know, they've got the settings for other people's phones. Like everyone wants to connect on Bluetooth, then you got to go in and say connect to this other person's phone. Um, and having like, <clears throat> for example, navigation up at the same time that I go in and uh, switch around the Bluetooth settings to connect to my son or my daughter's phone so they can listen to their music would be really, really helpful. Um, yeah. So I, I love this idea. I, ho I hope this is a trend. Well, and I think what's great about it too is that you know so so often you get manufacturers insisting on use on you using their software, their UI yeah. or whatever it might be. And in this particular case, this is really the best of both worlds. They have you connect, which sounds like a pretty good UI according to Philip here. But then they're also giving you the option to use the, the whether Android or iOS, whether it's Android Auto or CarPlay, to use the, the 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 phone app of your choice. Like that's giving user choice is awesome, and I think that's where you get more sales from being equipped to support anybody as opposed to just one person. Um, yep. So good job, good job on Dodge and Ram and the Ram team for doing this. I think that's really impressive. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely. that's super cool. Yeah. And not to make the not to make the show too much longer, but the other thing that I really enjoy uh, shifting away from from the the this this particular story um, is the picture in picture capability um, on my pixel, like especially when I'm driving um, and I want to go do something I, I want to go put on some music or something like that and it pulls up the little little picture in picture thing of the and yeah. I still have the map. I can still see the map while I'm navigating through my music library or something like that. Uh, super that's like one of the most helpful features that that have come out. <clears throat> In a long time, I feel like, at least for me, I don't know if you feel like that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's very, that's very, very cool. I, I, I um, the picture picture is very cool. I don't have a car, so I don't drive as much. Uh, so I haven't had as much experience with Android Auto and that sort of thing. So like the actual kind of, you know, in the field testing and playing around with this, I don't get to do as much as yeah. I want to. Um, but this looks super cool. I've, I joke and I, you know, I say like when I do get another car, it is going to be so tricked out. Like I want an electric car with Android <laughs> auto with all like, and it's going to be completely, uh, unaffordable. So, or inaffordable right. as they say. Right. But, uh, yeah, so cool stuff. Well, Philip, thanks for the report from the Detroit and Houston auto show. That's really cool. Um, I love seeing cars so much fun. So, all right. Well, that said, it's that time of the night. We're going to move into the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. All right. Well, last week I was not here. I was on vacation, so I didn't get to participate in the arena. But Flo and Jason and friend of the show, Mateo, were. And the results, actually, that's uh, two weeks ago, Victor. I updated the link in the doc. Uh, 
You want to go back and change that? <laughs> I was hoping I caught it before you clicked on it, but yeah. So it's, um, but uh, <laughs> moving to that, the the apps were a Skyline, View Ranger, and Microsoft Launcher, and the winner was Microsoft Launcher, which was brought to the arena by Mateo. He came in first with forty percent of the vote. Uh, View Ranger, which was Flow's app, got thirty five percent, and Jason got twenty five percent of the vote. So a win for the guests. And thanks to Wade County in the chat room at the standings through four weeks, the guests are currently in the lead with 12 points. Jason is in second with 11 points. I'm in third with 10 points, and Flo is in last with six points. And Jason and Flo not being here is not going to help them in the arena. But uh, Aaron, <laughs> uh, you have an opportunity to continue the guest streak and continue their lead, um, which would be pretty cool. Uh, but we'll start with my app since I missed last week. Um, and uh, we are going to do some fun, funky uh, kind of streaming technology. I am sharing my screen with you, Victor. Are you receiving it? Hopefully. I'm trying to open it now. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. This is a live studio. And Aaron, I did install your, your apps. I'll be able to show it off. So, uh, oh, fantastic. Assuming, ass assuming this all works here. Yes, I with our wonderful. Here we go. This is, my, this is my screen. How cool is that? Future. All right. So my app is called Scheduled. And basically, it is a way to schedule text messages, uh, which is really, really cool. And what caught my eye was that it not only works with SMS messages, but it also works with Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or whatnot. And as we've been doing the arena, uh, viewers might notice a bit of a uh, a bit of a uh, theme in some of the apps, and that I'm getting older and my memory is going. And so quite often I will be walking down the street at 10 o'clock at night and I'll go, oh, I got to ask, I got to ask so-and-so that question, but I can't text them because it's 10 or 11 o'clock at night and they're asleep or whatnot. Or, you know, or I, I, a lot of times I think of things at like six, seven in the morning that I want to ask my friends who live on the West coast. And, uh, so I go, well, I don't want to, you know, bother them now with a text message with scheduled. I can type the text message and say, send it at this particular time. So here's the app. Very nice, kind of pretty material design, hit the action button. And here I can select my recipients. Uh, it accesses your contact list. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to show you any of my friends' phone numbers. But believe me when it accesses your contact list. Um, you can pick a date. So I'm going to say to send a text message tomorrow. And you can say what time. And I'm going to do it at, at 7.30 p.m. You can set a repeat if you want to. So if it's – if. If you really want to bug your friend and text them the same thing every every Wednesday at 7.30, you could do that. <laughs> but that's kind of a neat little thing. Um, and then you could turn on auto send. Um, and as you see here in the warning, when auto send is selected, the message will be sent automatically at the scheduled time via SMS. Um, so auto send is actually something. The app is free in the Google Play Store, but auto send is only available if you upgrade uh, through the in-app purchase, which I believe was $2.99. Um, so pay your developers. It always helps. You get the kind of bonus footage, uh, bonus uh, features. It also removes ads. The free version has an ad at the bottom of it. Um, but then you enter your message. You say, hey, how's it going? And then when you're done doing that, you can hit send. You can hit check. And it goes into a queue. Um, Victor, if you can cut away to me, I'm going to add a recipient. And then that way we can show this. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to respect our friends' privacies. All right. Okay. So now, if you go back to it, you can see I've scheduled the message to go tomorrow. Uh, and now it's scheduled. And there you go. So that is scheduled in the settings. Um, oddly, <laughs> surprisingly, for some reason, there's a birthday section where you can import birthdays, um, which is neat. Because uh, it will go through your contacts and identify any birthdays you have in there and then auto schedule happy birthday messaging, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, but then additionally, also, you can manage the services that it offers. So here I have it set up to support SMS, WhatsApp. I don't use Facebook Messenger. I don't use Telegram, but they're there, um, as well as it enables you to be able to copy the message or call or email or, or more. So you can manage the different services that you do use. Um, and then the, I already have the premium plan, uh, but this is where you can trigger the in-app purchase to buy it. Um, so neat little app that helps you schedule text messages. Um, the one thing to note is that I, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I am a WhatsApp user. Oh, wow. I, when I turn off my screen, it turns off that. That's pretty cool. Um, I am a WhatsApp user 
And uh, so I was excited to see that this had WhatsApp integration. It does not auto send with WhatsApp or Messenger or Telegram. Um, it only auto sends with SMS. So if you're an SMS user and you want to auto send messages, this is a great tool. But if you're using Messenger or Telegram or WhatsApp, what it will do is it will store the message and then at the appropriate time, give you a notification saying, hey, you want to send a message via WhatsApp now, press this button and then it launches WhatsApp and then you can, and then uh, pastes in the message and you can send it manually that way. Um, so important to note that. But the whole idea of just saying, hey, I want to ask somebody a question. I'm not going to do it till tomorrow. Let me schedule that. Get me hit with the notification. That's a helpful uh, tool in and of itself. So scheduled. Schedule your text messages free in the Google Play Store. Nice design, very useful. I like it. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, that is cool. I was going to ask you if it did the birthday thing, but you beat me to it. You're like, yeah. It so, so the birthday thing was something you were looking for. It was absolutely like I, I am notoriously bad for you know forgetting my mom's and my dad's birthdays, and yep. luckily I, I tend to remember my wife's, but the kids sometimes, ah, <laughs> uh, you know. So um, yeah, that would be super helpful just to have that like set up like automatically do this for me, please. Like don't make me look bad. Uh, help me yep. not to look bad in, in front of my friends and family. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and it's it's uh, the birthday <clears throat> thing. I'm thankful to Facebook for giving that to me where every day I get a notification that tells me the various birthdays and I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. So there, there they are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so scheduled, uh, that is my app. And so Aaron, I've got your app loaded. I will pull it up and you can talk us through it. Uh, we were both shocked that this hasn't been used yet. Yeah, I could, so I was having a hard time. I've got a number of apps that I've been storing up over the past year, uh, just waiting to talk about them. And this one came out a little while ago, and I've been, it's a game, and I've been playing it, and I think everyone's, if you haven't played it yet, you're going to love it. So this is the, uh, are you a fan of Stranger Things, by the way? Um, I'm going to make a confession that I have not watched it. I'm a fan of it. Uh, I'm a fan of it conceptually, but uh, I have not gotten around to watching it yet. Oh my! What what is wrong with you, dude? It's a it's a long story. It's it's one of those How things you're married. You know when you, you yeah, know when you yeah, talk about, you're like oh we're gonna watch it and you never quite get around to it and then you can't watch yeah. it without one another and it becomes yeah so there you go. Yeah. Well, you're gonna That's love that. it when you start watching it. Let's let's just put it that way. All right. Uh, yeah. So for fans of Stranger Things, um, if you haven't checked this out, it is Stranger Things the game. Uh, this was developed for Netflix to support to to promote the show, but it, it's a free a free game. And the surprising thing is, you know, usually when these things come out, you're like, eh, whatever, like it's jinky, like they're just doing it to get me to watch the show. It's not very good. This is exactly the opposite of that. It's actually a really really good uh, old school 16 bit style. Uh, 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 RPG walk through the dungeon dungeon crawler kind of game. Um, all the characters are in there. All the locations from the show are in there. So you know, you, I think you start out like in the um, uh, in the lab, and then later on you go to the middle school and you play all the different characters. And each character has a special ability. Um, I think uh, uh, what's his name, the sheriff guy. He's got a he's got a gun. Uh, Lucas has like a like a uh, his. Um, slingshot thing and you know there's special powers with 11 and all that kind of stuff um so it's just very right, so should very, i do it should i do it in normal mode or classic mode uh, let's do normal do that's normal. easier do all right normal. so what do i do here uh it should guide you through it right yeah like it starts so. with the story just just like all those old games we used to play on the on the original nintendo right oh this is cool i like it it's the classic event. And so you just tap on where you need to go. Yep. And then just you tap, tap on, on things. You need to go. Yep. yep. And, you know, the story progresses, you know, um, you have to go, you have to, basically there's a bunch of quests that you have to go do, right? So, oh, you've got to go to the lab and, and free this scientist so he can help you do blah, blah, blah. Um, and so you have to go do that. And once you do that, then you go to the next thing. So they, they walk you through step by step, but everything's really good. And a lot of the things in here, just like all good, classic games of this style are, are clickable. So, so, you know, sometimes you'll click on a, on a toilet and the toilet will flush. Like that was always a thing I always tried when I was a kid uh, because I was, you know, like 12 years old or something. But, um, you know, all the things are clickable. You can get new weapons. You can get health if you need it. You can do all, 
all of those things. And, and, it, and it also fits really well within the storyline, of course. So just, it's a game that I, I was really surprised that it was actually playable. I thought, well, I'll get through the first level and then they'll try to sell me something or whatever. Um, as far as I can tell, it's completely free. There's there's no in-product sales that, that I've uncovered. Uh, chat room, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but just the style and the amount of time that they put in to make this look retro. I mean, the whole show is about the 80s. <clears throat> And the time that they put in to actually make this thing a very playable game, a fun game to play, and keep the the feel of this, uh, you know, late '80s style game that we, well, I shouldn't say we all, uh, people of my age played to death when they were kids. Um, I just really appreciate the work that they put into it, and I would highly recommend going out and checking it out. It's a lot of fun. And does it got puzzles as well too, or? Yeah, yeah. So like on that one, you have to find all the key cards and and shut off all the lasers before you can get oh, to the cool. doors. Yeah, it's Look really cool. That. And of course it gets progressively harder, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So Stranger Things the game. I, I this is this is very cool of them to do this with you know, the kind of it should be this design aesthetic, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna I'm i I'm gonna fight here. There we go, I got it. I uh, this is very cool. I haven't even played the game. I like this. This is the this is my style of ga- my, my style of games. I love the old yeah, Lucas Arts Lucas Arts games and things like that. So yep. very cool. So Stranger Things the game, free in the Google Play Store, fun time. So we got a nice little uh, productivity app, and then we got a uh, fun game. So you got some choices there. All right. So uh, Jason's not here, so we're doing things a little differently. Go to bitly. That's b i t dot l y slash a a a show three fifty four. That's bit.ly slash AA show 354 to vote in the poll. Or you can go to the All About Android community on Google Plus and you can vote there. And you can choose your favorite app, whether it's scheduled or Stranger Things the game. Um, Victor, I'm very curious to see what you're going to vote for. Uh, because, you know, usually Victor, as the wind as, as the wind blows with Victor, that's usually how the poll goes. So, ah, uh, he has to go for Stranger Things. I don't blame you. So, Aaron... Yeah. Uh, do you think my eight-year-old will still be asking for a mullet? <laughs> uh, I hope not. Uh, my kids have not gone there yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> although they do, I mean, I seriously, some of those 80s styles are coming back. I swear. Um, uh, late seventies, early eighties. It's, it's a thing right now. So yeah, my wife is I, like, are you sure? <laughs> I, I can't, did he, did he I, I, seriously? No, wait a second. Are you joking or did he seriously ask well, he, to have a serious? He, he wants one. <laughs> no way. That's awesome. No. It's got to it be was, in the yearbook photo, man, or it's got to be in the, the class photo for sure. Listen, listen. No, right? They were not cool when we were there in the 80s with them. Like, people had mullets <laughs> at the time. We're like, oh, that dude's got a mullet. That's not cool. I don't know, so, man. Yeah. Jose Canseco, <laughs> dude. Uh, listen, Jose Canseco is nobody's role model. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, so there's the poll. Go vote and be heard. Bitly slash AA show 354. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Aaron, for bringing that fun game into it. And thank you for joining me this week, not leaving me all alone. Uh, it's great to have you back yeah. on the show. Uh, well, it's good to be back. Gonna, yeah, what have you been up to? Yeah, so the timing was definitely good. I'm glad uh, I could step in, especially when you're a little shorthanded. So I'm glad it worked out. Um, yeah, so boy, lots of things. Uh, uh, first off, if you don't know, if you don't watch some of the other podcasts where I've talked about this, I've got a great little book you can go buy if you're into making things, especially on the Raspberry Pi, but you're a little skittish of Linux, you can go out and buy my book, Linux for Makers. Uh, I put a lot of work and effort into it, hopefully trying to explain Linux at a high enough level that people that are unfamiliar with it can at least get a little bit familiar with it and, and do a little bit better as they work on their projects and be more efficient, um, instead of struggling with, uh, crap, what does that command mean? I don't know. So definitely go out and check out that book, Linux for Makers. Uh, what else is going on? If you're in the area, if you're in like the Northern California area and you're looking for a good makerspace, especially with tech shop closing down, uh, definitely come up to Benicia. Benicia Makerspace is uh, executive director and founder there. Um, and, uh, uh, we've got lots of great tools and equipment, 24 seven access works kind of like a gym membership. You've heard me talk about this before. Uh, and yeah. if you haven't shame on you, come, come up and check us out. And then, you know, just shout out to my employer. Um, as well, who actually let me, uh, uh, gave me some time and, and in the office space and on all that stuff to, to allow me to be on the, on the show today. So go check out newrelic.com. Uh, if you're looking for uh, software that can manage, <clears throat> excuse me, monitor your applications, monitor your infrastructure, monitor your end user experience, 
uh, definitely go check them out. Uh, we've got a really good product and it's the reason I'm working here is I fell in love with it. Um, really powerful stuff. So check it out. Very cool. Uh, always a pleasure to have you. You're great. I, I could talk. We could talk for hours. Which is oh, yeah, absolutely. Stuff, so good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Ron XO posting my usual nonsense. I'm I'm fighting a cold myself, so I'm just glad that we got to the finish line. So it's all good. Um, Victor, any 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 words for the audience? No, you, you did great, Ron. Oh, thanks. You're too nice. You're too kind. Um, all right. Well. It's that time of year, everyone. Uh, it's time for our yearly Twit survey. And of course, we want to hear from you uh, so that we can serve you better. So go to twit.tv slash survey. Let your voice be heard. That's twit.tv slash survey. We appreciate all the feedback. It helps us make better shows uh, for you. And so uh, good stuff there. Go to twit.tv slash survey. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, be sure to wish Jason uh, well wishes on Twitter if you follow him uh, there, Jason Howell. Uh, he's under the weather with the flu, so hopefully he'll be back next week. Uh, Flo will be back next week. Hopefully we'll all be back together. Uh, but until then, you can get in on the action. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Um, or you can email us or send a video mail at aa at twit.tv. It's been a while since we've had a video mail, so we'll send us videos, aa at twit.tv. That's always fun. Of course, you can uh, follow along on the fun on Twitter at Android Show. Um, be sure to check out the list of apps that have appeared in the Android arena. We've got some awesome people who moderate that list. Uh, and that is at twit.to slash Android apps. And you can see all of the stats and the current standings at twit.to slash arena stats. And thank all the great people who help moderate that and keep it up to date as well as twit.to slash Oreo for the latest in the Oreo uh, stats as well. Uh, you can get show notes and past episodes at twit.tv slash AAA. Um, and, of course, you can come watch the show live. If you're in the uh, Northern California area and you want to come to the studio, just email tickets at twit.tv. Uh, I'm glad no one was there tonight because no one is actually there. But <laughs> if you come live, you can see the Oreo tasting happen in real time uh, when Jason is there. We so still yeah, have go crushed to Oreos for, for that. Yeah, though. there you go. So. Um, and, of course, you can catch us on the live stream every Tuesday starting around 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's going to wrap it up for this week's All About Android. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Hey, bye. Bye-bye. Aaron, I'm sorry I don't have any to share over the internet, but uh, we could not do the pre-show without doing an Oreo tasting. So I'm here with some mint Oreos uh, that I picked up at the bodega on my way home. And now I understand Jason has sampled mint Oreos in the past, uh, and he gave them a 9.5, which I feel like is a generous rating. Aaron, have you ever had mint Oreos? I love mint Oreos. I love all kinds of things that mix up the chocolate cookie and the minty uh, flavoring. So, uh, yeah, I, it's, I, was, I wasn't sure because my last foray with uh, these Oreos was I tried the secret flavor, uh, which turned out to be Fruity Pebbles. And it was possibly one of the worst uh, taste experiences <laughs> of my life. Um, but I do like I do like Thin Mints, the Girl Scout cookies, and these smell like uh, Thin Mints. And I do like Andy's candies, and they do smell like the same way. So I'm going to give it a try here. Uh, so I'm going to move away from the mic so you don't hear me eating. But mint Oreos being sampled. That's really good. I really like that, actually. Nine point so five. The question is. Yeah. The question is, do they make it? Do they make a version that's uh, chocolate covered, like a fudge covered mint Oreo, like? I'm feeling that like would, they could that, step it up. They could be. They could plus it um, with some chocolate coveredness. I will. I was gonna say Jason's nine point five was very generous, and I. Uh, I, I don't know if I can go that high because I feel like ten is perfect, and that's very close right. to ten. I will give it a solid nine, though. There it is go. good. I like it. So you gotta, you gotta it. leave some room just in case they, you know, one up it. Uh, yeah, my favorite. Every holiday, I get the white fudge. Covered Oreos right. for Christmas, or I hope hope that I do. I put it on my Christmas list, uh, and usually uh, Santa comes through on that one. It's really good. I said, well, you've been good, so clearly. Um, yeah. Well, so Scooter X in the chat room shared a link that on Target there are Oreo Thin Bites mint cream that are fudge dipped. Ooh. So the Oreo Thins, which are a little the thin, you know, the the thin type. 
they do have the mm -hmm. chocolate covering. Unknown if they have the classic Oreo size or if it's just the thins. But yeah. uh, so here's the thing. Good stuff. Oreos are Oreos are expensive. I bought this pack of Oreos. Maybe my, my bodega overcharges, but it, it was like five bucks for this pack of Oreos. I was like, wow. wow. But, yeah. Especially the specialty ones, you know? Yeah. I think they feel like, you know, it's limited, limited edition. Yeah. They charge a little bit extra for these. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So there's mm -hmm. your weekly, your weekly Oreo tasting Oreo mint cream. I give it a nine, not quite as generous as Jason's 9.5, but still very, very good. Strongly recommend. I will actually keep that in the house. Unlike those uh, secret flavor Oreos, which I burned <laughs> on the patio. Yeah. No. All right, are, you, cool. are you keeping a running? Are you keeping a running tally? Like, which what the worst one? I mean, obviously, Fruity Pebbles. Not we good, are. But. Well, if you if you if you go, this is a good time to plug. If you go to twit.to slash Oreo, that's t w i t dot t o slash Oreo. You can see on the Twit Wiki are all about Android Oreo flavors ratings. Where when we started, we really didn't have much of a rating system in place, but we've gotten to oh. one now, <laughs> and so <laughs> you can see how we all feel about our Oreos. Um, and we can see that Jason gave mint ones uh, 9.5 on November 7th. Uh, so there it is. Nice. Yes. So, and this is our little, our, our little bonus for people who stayed on to the end of the show, uh, because we did it at the top of the show for many, many months and I got kind of tired. <laughs>